let's put our hands together uh, to bring uh, on stage here with us Chinu Prasarvit. You can see she's very passionate about discovering the truth behind the food. So Chinu, please come. Talia, you are very busy, right? You are talking about food, directing from heart. Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I am here to try, it's my endeavor to demystify nutrition for you. It's a vast field and there's so much uh, mumbo jumbo everywhere. We've got various kinds of diets doing the rounds. We have people coming to hospitals, to our clinics. Uh, we've heard of this new diet, what would you say about it? And, uh, and then we go on searching on a new diet which you've never heard about. Um, so here I am to try demystify nutrition for you. Uh, first, at the first part of our presentation, we'll uh, try to give you an overview of uh, various diets that are doing the rounds. If I so before I start talking about diets, how many of you actually chew your food very well? Hope you don't count the number of chews that you have. You do. 32. Where did that number come from? <laughs> Actually, it doesn't have too much of a significance of the number. The idea is to chew well. The idea is to enjoy every mouthful that goes. Uh, the idea is to really take in all the energy from the uh, food that you eat. Um, how many of you have breakfast in the car? Almost the same. <laughs> Now, breakfast in the car is not a very good idea. It should always be in a very, very relaxed environment first thing in the morning. You kickstart your day. Hope you all had breakfast. We will, of course, have a lunch break too. I believe that there are various diets doing the rounds, but what is required is the positive attitude. Uh, after all my research on various diets, uh, I believe if you have a good positive attitude, uh, you can't go wrong with it. We've divided different kinds of diets. Uh, uh, a vegan diet, which is the most one of the most popular diets that we've uh, looked at, which is basically um, uh, also uh, we are looking at another diet called Ayurveda. We have uh, diets uh, which also have fasting as their uh, premises. We have a food combining diet, which we probably most nutritionists follow, where we combine uh, different kinds of macronutrients. We will deal with them one by one. So when we look at this vegan diet, it looks very nice and colorful. Uh, a vegan diet would usually eliminate all animal products including meat and dairy. And people in this world have turned vegans uh, uh, mainly because of ethical reasons. Also that we know that humans are biologically herbivorous and uh, as our digestive system cannot metabolize plant and uh, ca can metabolize plant and not meat. And also that we know the fact that meat and milk industry are the most environmentally polluting industries people have turned into vegans. Looks like a very colorful slide. The only missing uh, uh, link in this uh, vegan diet is milk and meat products. So you can't see chicken, fish, eggs and the dairy products. Uh, the diet usually consists of grains and starchy vegetables, of course nuts and seeds. You have lots of fruits and vegetables and of course proteins uh, to get you from beans and lentils. Then when we go to the next diet, which is a very much our uh, Indian uh, system of uh, diet, which is the Ayurvedic system. And if you look at the Ayurveda, uh, according to Ayurveda, health is uh, basically a balance of three different energies called the Pitta, Kapha and the Vata. We have an elaborate system of how we individualize uh, these energies. So if you look at uh, a pitta individual, he may become very, very highly uh, angry or a perfectionist or uh, would have uh, physical symptoms like indigestion or heartburn or acidity-like symptoms. So uh, the Ayurveda would give you certain uh, amount of uh, certain kind of foods that you should try pacifying that energy in you. Uh, for example, if you have a pitta, we will look at uh, uh, coconut and we look at celery, we look at all these items to be added up to your diet to pacify that uh, dosha in you. If a kapha individual, a, an increase in kapha would lead to cold, congestion, uh, sneezing and any kind of an allergic manifestation. When we're looking at a vata imbalance in, an, uh, in a body, 
uh, it may manifest as constipation, maybe abdominal distension sometimes, an arthritis or an insomnia. So uh, it's a detailed system of Ayurveda but works on these three principles. There are different diets to pacify uh, uh, these doshas. You also have a overlapping kapha, pitta or a pitta dosha kind of uh, combinations where you need to pacify them. When we go to the next slide, uh, we have the food combining diet. We all as nutritionists sit and plan diets on macronutrients. So we have uh, carbohydrates, proteins and fats in various com co combinations, proportions. So all over, uh, I would say we usually look at about 50 to 55 percent of your diet should be carbohydrates, about uh, 15 to 20 percent of protein and then maybe 10 to 15 percent of fat. So uh, that's the range that we're looking at uh, on uh, combination of carbohydrates. Now these are three macronutrients, all the other ones we need in smaller quantities but the, these are three macronutrients that we need and uh, usually covered, uh, uh, usually believed all over the country and in the Asian system also. When we look at the other diet for us, this basically is also a diet for us. I don't know if it's very visible. Fasting is a way of a detoxification. Now, detoxification, uh, everybody's heard of. Now, detoxification is something that could be as simple as having very light meals. So you could just have maybe a small amount of khichdi on a regular basis or porridge on a regular basis and detoxify yourself. If you go further up the ladder, you've got a very simple diet of salads and raw foods, which is a little more difficult level of detoxifying or fasting. The other is fresh juices. So in this kind of a detoxification diet, we're not looking at uh, canned or tinned juices. We're looking at fresh juices and fruits that you can help you detoxify. There are fasting diets which only sustain on water. So you, there are people who only uh, have, we have, of course, have the karvachas happening. So there's no water the entire day. And then you have the apex which is no food and no water. So that's uh, uh, one possibility that we will also see at the end of, this, end of our presentations. Now fasting is something that's an integral part of all religions mostly. You have it in Islam, you have it in Lent in Christianity, you have uh, uh, Hindu fasts, you've got uh, Jain fasts which are more, more difficult fasts. So this is something uh, most people uh, would do it uh, for uh, detoxification but a lot of people do it for spiritual reasons and today I think they do it for health reasons more than anything else so detoxification or fasting is considered to be one kind of diet which could range from as light as, uh, as possible to no food and water now there are fads all over uh, for us uh, this is something that just keeps coming and going we have patients coming in uh, when they say uh, we want to now, now start amending our eating habits. Now the first thing that they'll go is, um, you want to go on a fat diet first, lose some weight and come back to you for a maintenance diet. Now what they don't realize when they go on a fat diet, what they're doing is ruining the system to quite an extent. So why, why, why do fat diets work basically? Any idea, I, I mean anybody can come up with this, why do you think all fat, most fat diets would work? You know, you talk of a general motor diet or an Atkins diet, we nutritionists will say, okay, we let's tweak the Atkins diet and then, then uh, suit it to our needs. But why do you think fat diets work? Placebo. Placebo. <laughs> Only placebo and nothing else. Why? Because I keep telling them, okay, you come back to me and you, uh, okay, I'll give you this diet. Uh, don't follow the fat diet and just believe in the fact that I will give you this diet and this is, this is going to work. They come back with the same results as with a fat diet. You said you promised me these many kilos. I said yes. This is the promise that I give you. The same diet, uh, which a fat diet, the weight loss that you'll get from a fat diet, we, we would promise you from a normal, balanced, healthy diet. So fat diets is something that we and I've left a few boxes empty because I know there'll be more coming in, and then uh, we have all kinds of other diets. If we look at the ones that uh, uh, is of uh, course uh, the most famous one, the Atkins diet. Uh, just made it into a pyramid to make you understand you have uh, uh, the whole grains in the products which is the carbohydrates and the apex which is something uh, the Atkin follows which says very few carbohydrates in your diet and the base is all protein so you have all your eggs and fish coming in huge quantities in an Indian context it becomes very difficult uh, to uh, let people follow up uh, Atkins diet because the main step of the diet is carbohydrate and of course we need the protein coming from lentils and pulses but uh, this is something that we can't really tweak it to an extent. So this is one diet and of course uh, 
We also have the GM diet, which uh, works on the principle of uh, a general motor diet. I think, how many of you have actually followed a general motor diet, the GM diet? You've heard of it all. Yeah. We have two hands, not too many followed the GM diet. So a GM diet basically works on a negative calorie food principle, which basically means that the foods you eat will actually burn more calories than the amount of energy that they provide for the body to store it as fat. So what the, the foods that you're eating will take up more energy to burn, right? So that's the reason you actually lose weight also on a GM diet. And if you look at the diet, very, very boring. Uh, you have, I mean, a, any one of you can actually tell me what this, the people who followed it, you've got Loki, you've got potatoes, you've got so uh, tomatoes for one day. So you've got diets which have been, in, yes. So uh, it's also called the cabinet soup diet. So this is called the vicious cycle of human behavior, which basically means that we go on diets, what we basically start a diet, we restrict ourselves, we deprive our bodies, we crave for it again, we finally give in, and then comes the guilt baggage. So there's something that we all go through when we are on a diet or on a fat diet or a normal diet. <coughs> now, on all these diets, what is the basically the common thread that we are looking at? They will all help you detoxify. They all will have fruits, vegetables, whole grains and legumes. And most of them will have lesser dairy, lesser red meat, less oily and fried foods. And of course, they would ask you to go slow on processed and junk foods. The most important thing that we all do when we follow diets is eating consciously with a positive attitude and that they all work. And of course, water is the most important because that's one way that we can also detoxify. Now, so when, when we look at all these diets, uh, what do we follow? What do we do? Now, there, there's, there's fat diets, there's the blood group diet, there's uh, our own normal diet that we follow as a balanced diet. What, 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 what is the, what is the uh, solution for us to follow? Now, what we would do is we would follow a process. Now, what we could, uh, after all the research that we've done, We've come that we follow a certain set of accepted practices. We have all the techno technology available to us which we can tailor and custom custom make it for us. And then of course the mind body nutrition that we've been much much talked about before before sessions. So this is the uh, uh, flow that should be happening when we are following that. Now this is something that I would want you to all see. This is something that we've come up with uh, after a lot of research, a lot of people that we've spoken to. These would be our golden foods. These would be the most accepted practices that we will have. Uh, in dairy, uh, we have yogurt. You know yogurt is considered to be a good probiotic, preferably if it's a home set curd, you have all the good strains of bacteria happening. We have ghee because uh, ghee, I don't know how many people actually have stopped using ghee at home. Now most of you are still using ghee at home. So most of your cooking is done in ghee or or tempering or tarka is at home done in ghee. Now, what the best part about ghee is it's got a good high smoking point. And what we tell people is your refined oils do not have as high smoking point as would ghee. So never ever stop using ghee in your diets. The other is butter. Of course uh, the white butter that we have in the natural form which is sans any salt is considered to be a better choice. And of course, green. Uh, when we're looking at fruits, vegetables, uh, coconut tops our list. And uh, of course, you've heard from Dr. Hegere and all over the place. Coconut is something that it's just like long, long forgotten fruit, which is uh, very much available, uh, very native to our country. And coconut oil, coconut milk, coconut water, pure fresh coconut is something that's very, very healthy. And um, of course we have apples, we've got bananas, we've got citrus fruits. Most citrus fruits we feel are acidic, but they always have an alkaline residue in the body. So citrus fruits is something that should be encouraged. And all seasonal vegetables, we of course talk of seasonal, because when you have something that is seasonal, it is the quality is at its peak, they're much cheaper. And um, uh, that's something that has come for a reason. It's called, also called the God's farm seeds. It's come for a season, they come, they come in that season for a reason. They are there because uh, you need it at that point of season. 
Uh, when we look at cereals, uh, we look at oats. Of course, oats has got uh, a lot of uh, good soluble fiber content in them. Now, soluble fiber is basically forms like a, uh, a sponge-like thing in the system. So every time you eat or your bile, your cholesterol, everything is uh, the movement is facilitated when you have oats. Oats is like a sponge. You can imagine a sponge that way. Uh, quinoa, of course, is something that uh, is new and everybody has started using. Have you heard of quinoa? Yeah, it's basically a seed, uh, not really a cereal, it's a pseudo cereal because uh, quinoa is something that uh, has uh, 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 similar uh, uh, calories uh, as cereal, carbohydrates but at the same time the good part about this quinoa is it's a good quality protein, the most absorbable protein that we have for vegetarians. So this is something that uh, we are looking at uh, to be used. We have also brown rice and uh, of course, much better than the white rice, you have the outer layer intact, or your B complex, or your vitamins, minerals, or the fiber intact should be used. And uh, we have amaranth, uh, which is also very, very digestible, and it's been found to be helping in the oxygenation of the system. So amaranth is something as a long, uh, you know, uh, forgotten uh, uh, grain that you should use. The other is buckwheat. Buckwheat is also considered to be very good for health. And uh, of course, you have our millets, very own millets. We have ragi and bajra and things that have been we, we've been using it for centuries altogether. Just just forgotten, and we just want to get them all back. Uh, oils, nuts and seeds. Of course, you have uh, coconut oil again, topping the list. Something that is uh, an elixir is what I would say. It's an it's a miracle oil that you should use. And um, coconut oil, uh, basically, the good part, uh, as also Dr. Hegre and everybody else mentioned, the coconut oil. The good thing about it is. The fat present in it is uh, so uh, sensitive and does it d gets absorbed very, very quickly. So it's very close to the mother's milk. So uh, when we have uh, infants who can't really uh, tolerate mother's milk, coconut oil is the only oil in the world which is absorbable, which is very, very similar to the human milk. Uh, we also have olive oil. Of uh, course, a cold pressed is what we're looking at. The first press of all is the extra virgin variety is considered to be good for health. And then, of course, our very own uh, mustard oil that is considered to be very good for health. Very high monounsaturated fatty acid content in it. We have nuts like almonds, walnuts. We, of course, have flax seeds. Uh, you, have you all heard of flax seeds? Yeah, we usually ask people because fl flax seed has a similar component again of soluble fiber and lignans. A tablespoon roast and ground flaxseed, just put over your food, can give you a good amount of omega-3. We, Most of us uh, uh, people who are vegetarians, the only source of omega-3 for us is walnuts and flaxseeds. So flaxseed is something that we've been emphasizing more than, and it's very, very uh, uh, traditional, it's not something that's new. Uh, uh, it's called alsi in Hindi, it's also called tisi in some regions, and something very widely available, very widely grown. We have uh, uh, people from even small towns and villages coming to us and it's very easy for them, for us to explain them, it's something that I'll see. So people from Bihar would name, oh Tisi, oh you're talking about Tisi, so that's something that's very, very uh, old and very, very traditional, we've heard of it. And uh, we of course have uh, pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds are considered to be very high on zinc. And uh, zinc of course is a very, very uh, important mineral. Uh, very good for um, uh, for men because it's very high on um, zinc. It's good for the prostate also. So pumpkin seed we've been uh, we widely used. Very high on fiber, of course. We also have the sunflower seeds, and uh, there's something that you should use on a regular basis. Uh, and we have the last list called the protective foods. Now we call it the protective foods because it does have some good protective effect on the body. So when I'm looking at a very age-old uh, tradition of using turmeric, uh, when we talk about curries, uh, we talk of turmeric. But the, uh, one thing that I would like to mention is when we're looking at curries, we use a powdered uh, uh, turmeric. But you don't have to confuse yourself with curry powder and turmeric. They are two different things because the curry powder, besides the turmeric, would have a lot of other things to add up taste. So turmeric in isolation as either a raw turmeric, if you can use at home, uh, you can grate it in your soups, your gravies, your curries at home, or you can use it even chopped, grate it in your salads, so that's something that you can use. Uh, neem is, uh, is a very organic antiseptic, so that's something uh, sans any chemicals and it's been age old tradition of using it. Uh, in fact, Mahatma Gandhi used to you know, use it uh, by crushing it in the morning and then make it a paste out of it. 
So neem is something that is very, very traditional and we use. Uh, honey, uh, if it's a pure organic honey that you're looking at, uh, is uh, of course something that blocks the cholesterol synthesis sometimes. It is a laxative, it is uh, very good for the skin, it's something that should be used regularly. Tulsi again, uh, most of us have potted plants of Tulsi at home, or something very simple to do every day. And uh, cinnamon, which is uh, dalchini, is uh, considered to be uh, an anti-diabetic uh, uh, thing that you can use every day. So cinnamon should be used and um, cinnamon also is considered to be a diuretic. So any kind of extra water weight uh, that people uh, retain uh, can be flushed out when you use a little bit of cinnamon. So uh, a pinch of cinnamon over your tea coffee, or I do not tea coffee, but if you want to put it over your porridge or uh, uh, over fruit, uh, apple and cinnamon goes very well. So use it on a regular basis. So now what, what we're basically looking at is one is our most accepted practices. When we're looking at a technology tailored to us, we've got uh, different kind of food allergy tests that you can do because there could be underlying allergies that we could have which we are unaware of. And uh, you can also go through tox toxin tests. So when you do that, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, Mr. Singh had mentioned we've also got toxin tests that we can get it done. So just to see if we have any toxins. And, uh, of course, uh, the next, which has been again much talked about, uh, I will not be the uh, uh, right person to be talking about mind body, but you know, you know the link to mind body to nutrition and how what what is important is not what you eat, but how you eat is important. So if you eat in a very relaxed environment, uh, not so healthy foods can also become healthy in the system. But if you eat the healthiest of foods, but in a stressful environment, you've got stresses all over, you have it in your head, you have all the chaos happening, you still uh, would not be able to absorb it very well. So by using, I believe in this concept, by using your own insight, your own perception, observation and judgment, you can become your own physician, your own nutritionist and your own healer. You don't need anybody, you can do it on your own. Now we can uh, look at the best practices quickly. Of course, we've talked about seasonal foods, so choose the food according to season and something that's available locally, something that is very, very native to your region. Every time you have stuff coming from outside, you increase the carbon footprint and this is something uh, locally available food is something the quality that is going to be at its peak and you can extract maximum nutrition out of it. Eat when hungry, uh, I don't know how many people will actually go by that principle, eat when hungry, very few hands. So what I would suggest is eat when hungry, why, because the body will tell you when you need it. I, I, we, we still counsel people to eat regularly but uh, what the real idea is uh, eat when hungry, that's something that the body will tell you you need it and you should have it. Sit, don't stand and eat. Uh, the real concept is you have to basically be relaxed. You standing, you want to relax. You should sit and eat. Chew your food well. Uh, that's very, very important because, as we know, as some digestion, especially with starches and carbohydrates, begins with the saliva in the mouth, and uh, that's something that everybody knows. Uh, water. Uh, we it's an eternal debate, but uh, we would still suggest 1.5 3 liters of clean water. And we have a lot of uh, uh, acidic water that we're looking at. Uh, the simplest way to alkalize your water is to put some few lemon wedges in it. That is all you need and your water is completely no problem. So uh, every day your, your, your intake of water should have lemon wedges in it. Um, of course coconut oil much talked about treatment for Alzheimer's and severe skin diseases. Um, uh, because it is so very well absorbable, uh, we are looking at one tablespoon of it to be used and gargled because the absorption starts in the throat. So it is that absorbable uh, in the system. So we would suggest that coconut oil is something that you should all keep it at the dining table and use it on a regular basis. And of course we know that it's, uh, the fat is very, very similar to mother's milk. And, uh, Last but not the least, of course, we have one hour of walking. How many of you actually go out for a walk in the morning? I think most of you. 
uh, how many people actually go out, uh, maybe go to the gym or exercise or have the time in the day, about an hour, half an hour of physical activity? Okay, so mostly. So one hour of exclusive physical activity, we're not doing anything else. When we ask people, um, uh, do you, do you, are you active? And then they would say, um, we are active at work. Uh, the women will say, we are active at home. Uh, we have uh, patients or we have people who will say, uh, we are active, uh, I'm never on my seat. I'm always moving around in office. But we want an exclusive one hour of walking or any kind of sports that you're comfortable with. Half an hour of pranayam, uh, breathing and meditation. Of course, we'll have a meditation uh, uh, course uh, uh, in the next uh, sessions. So that's something that we are looking at. Now, uh, having said all that, you have a, a good diet, uh, you have mind-body nutrition, everything is in sync. What if you have food that is contaminated? What if we are consuming genetically modified crops or food? What if the food is non-seasonal? We probably are not getting the best quality. Um, the food is out of region. We are uh, creating a carbon footprint. Uh, we only emphasize in anthropometric measurements. Okay, let's do a height weight. We take a waist. We have a BMI. We will give you a diet chart according to that. So that's something that we have to be careful with. A lot of processed foods, toxins. We, we have toxins all over. Uh, parasites and viruses. So this is things that we need to be aware of. And of course, misleading advertisements. Um, no cholesterol oil or um, no added sugar juices. So this is something that we be very, very careful with. Oils uh, do not have cholesterol because cholesterol is an animal origin thing. No plant oil can have cholesterol, something very obvious. And you should all as uh, consumers uh, be very, very aware of. Fruit juices have their own sugar. So even if there's no added sugar, it doesn't make a difference. So be aware of this. And uh, before I actually uh, wind up my uh, presentation, the, uh, the most important thing is that we all have our emotions attached to our foods. We are all, all emotional eaters. We, we, we. What we forget is uh, we have people who uh, really detach themselves from food, detach themselves from food by training their mind and body. What do they live on then? So if they detach themselves from food, they they live on light. So I'll just show you like a one one and a half minute video to see there are people in this world who are living without food and also water, and they only live on light. Also 60 Jahre ohne Wasser und ohne Essen, ohne Energie, das glaube ich schlicht und einfach nicht. Das ist denkunmöglich. Ich bin ein Austrian Research Scholar und ein Dokumentary Writer von uh, P.A. Schrobinger, der uh, uh, has to his credit about 10 years of research and about 900 hours of footage on how he's interviewed people all over the world. And in fact, uh, it's a 90 minute uh, video uh, due to time constraints. We couldn't have played it for you. But uh, that shows people all around the world uh, who are actually living on light. So that's something that is a possibility. So the idea is not to uh, not let you have lunch outside. The idea is that uh, uh, we are eating much more than what we need. And we do need to kind of be now starting to get aware uh, of how much and how we should be eating. Uh, thank you. And uh, if we uh, want, we can actually have a, this slight documentary of a 90 minutes uh, sometime uh, in the future, maybe in a week or so. Uh, so whosoever is interested in watching this 90 minute video can just have their names written. We have a special screening of this. It's a very, very interesting, it was just a trailer of one minute, uh, just to show you there is a possibility of this. How many of you actually seen it? Okay, so only two hands. So people who are interested can let us know and we can have a screening for them. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for your patience. And if there are any questions, we can uh, take it at the panel discussion. Panel discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you.